So I really wanted to get into responding versus reacting because I know the energies can be a little chaotic lately. There are a lot of challenges that have been coming our way because greater rewards are coming into. Um, and so we have to pass these tests, you know, and show that we can be unaffected by circumstance and that we are ready to be the strong container that the universe wants us to be and knows us to be in order to receive our manifestations. So responding versus reacting, as I said, isn't just semantics. There is a real difference and it has real consequences for your life and your relationships and your manifestations. And so if we look at the root of the words, responding comes from the Latin spondere. I don't speak Latin. I don't know if that's pronounced correctly, but it means to pledge and responsible has the same root. So you can feel into that importance. It's because responding allows you to actually make decisions that are aligned with your values versus reaction, which means to do or to perform. You're reacting to something. So instead of pledging your values, instead of taking that moment to pause and making sure your actions are aligned, you're just instantly reacting to whatever trigger comes up. And these actually happen in different parts of the brain. Reacting takes place in the amygdala, which is our lizard brain. You sometimes hear it called. It's where our survival instincts are. And it's the one that's developed over millennia to really win out over our newer, higher evolved brain where responding takes place from. And the reason for this is because those were the genes that got passed on, right? The survival instinct brain that is are always ready to do fight or flight at a moment's notice is really the one that got away to safety that really got to pass on those genes. So that's been hardwired into our brains again and again. Versus our newer evolved brain, the prefrontal cortex, which came later in humans development, that's responsible for executive function decision-making, knowing the difference between long-term and short-term goals and delaying gratification rewards versus risk. And that one doesn't fully develop until you're 25, which is why, you know, we give kids a lot of grace, why we treat minors differently in the justice system, because it's like they can't fully make these decisions with their prefrontal cortex not fully formed. And so we want to make sure we're making these value aligned decisions because in order to receive our manifestations, we need our thoughts, feelings, and actions all aligned, all admitting that same vibration. And we need it to be aligned with what we actually want, what we're actually trying to call in. So when we fall to being a victim of circumstance and we fall to these things that trigger us and we react right away, instead of responding, we're acting from that lower mind instead of from our higher mind and our higher selves. And we can't hear our intuition when we're in that lower mind because we're so trapped by the ego. And it makes sense why the amygdala evolved, as I said, because it helps us survive these real physical threats that used to exist. You know, the lion that was going to eat you if you didn't run from it versus the person who wanted to be fearless and go pet the lion probably didn't get to pass on their genes. But now, unless you're in some really extreme situations like homelessness or an abusive home life, there are really no physical threats to our safety in the modern day. They're mostly all psychological threats. They're threats to our identity, to our self-esteem, to our hopes and dreams. That's what triggers us when our ego gets poked. So the only real risk is to our ego, which we know we need to detach from. We know we need to let go of because it's the opposite of oneness. Ego is separation. Ego is greed. Ego is lack. Ego is needing to be seen some way. And that's what we're reacting to. And we often think it's, if we're in a victim mindset, that it's outside factors doing this to us. But even if someone makes you very happy, or if they make you very angry, whatever emotion they stir up in you, you're never actually reacting to them. You're reacting to the emotions that come up in your body. You're reacting to the butterflies you get in your stomach or 
when your heart drops into your stomach and you're really sad or when your palms get sweaty, you're always reacting to what's going on in your body. You know, there is no reality beyond you. You are experiencing everything within yourself and interpreting it in your mind. Nothing is happening to you. Everything is happening for you. And so to really respect that and to really give yourself the grace to respond, you have to create space there between the trigger, the recognition of it, and then how you choose to act. So you want to give yourself time to actually become the witness, notice when you're triggered, take that pause, so then you can process and see, okay, how does this fit in? Why am I being triggered? And what do I actually want out of the situation? What do I need? What is this trigger telling me I need? And how do I want to respond that is going to be in the most loving, best, high vibe way? Versus when you're just reacting, that's what you usually regret. You know, I used to snap a lot, and I still do sometimes if I get very, very frustrated, and I'm good about catching myself right after and being like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. But then I'll be so embarrassed that I'm like, oh, why did I even fly off the handle a little bit? when I didn't need to, when I don't even care about it 30 seconds later, you know? So responding is being able to catch that trigger before you have the reaction to it so that you're not calling in negative manifestations and so that you're not treating people poorly. You know, we want to be good people. We want to be loving people. We are love at our core soul frequency. We know that we are divine love. We're all one in this source energy. And so that's the vibration we want to be admitting. And when we cultivate a sattvic mind, uh, in Hinduism we say there are three gunas, uh, sattvic, rajasic, and tamasic. Rajasic is that really fiery heat energy, really spicy flavors. Tamasic is like inertia, stagnation, um, lethargy, laziness, and then sattvic is just totally calm, cool, collected, not triggered, not bothered, just go with the flow, dance with the universe, as Master Sri Akarshan always says. And we cultivate a sattvic mind through our practices, our spiritual practices, our sadhana, our yoga, our breath work, and just being the witness and observing our life. And it becomes so much easier and so much more enjoyable to go through life and see what the universe has in store for us when we do this. Because the thing is, even if you're totally calm, cool, and collected all the time, even if you have a totally sattvic personality and you've cultivated a calm mind, there's still going to be ups and downs in life. So you're still going to have emotions. But if you think of life as a roller coaster, do you want to be the person who's like super scared, holding on to the handles, like not having any fun, waiting for the ride to be over, thinking you're going to die at every turn? Or do you want to be the person with your hands up, like, woo? enjoying the ride you know these ups and downs that we experience in life don't have to reflect our vibration our vibration can be high and grateful and abundant this whole time while our experiences are this up and down ride and to do that you have to know your triggers so that you really can do that pause witness process plan and proceed and when you meditate and do breath work specifically it's almost like slowing down time. Like, I don't know if you guys remember that old movie Clock Stoppers where the kids could like pause their watches and then change things around in their environments and then press play again. It's almost like doing that for your mind because it actually allows you to make new neural connections that allow you to rely more on the prefrontal cortex instead of the amygdala. So instead of having that primitive reaction, that lizard brain snap judgment reaction, you get to actually calm down, witness, realize how it might be drawing up sensations in your body, realizing how it might be affecting you, realizing the little ego voice in your ear and being like, well, how do I actually want to respond instead that is more aligned with my goals and more aligned with my values? And when you are living a values-based life, everything is so much more fulfilling because you're not dealing with the little aggravations and you're not regretting decisions and you're not second guessing all everything you did and you don't have to replay conversations because you're always acting in accordance with your highest self and the thing is you will never regret making the more loving decision you will never regret 
choosing love. I have seen some memes before of people being like, oh, looking back and realizing I should have been like way angrier at this person. And it's like, no, you're not regretting being angrier. You're again regretting the reaction. But in that case, your reaction was to shut down. Your reaction was not to stand up for yourself. Your reaction was to close your throat chakra and not speak your mind. You're not regretting not being angry. Every time I've ever had an embarrassment or a regret or something I look back on or wish I hadn't have said, it's always been something said out of anger, said to fulfill something I felt like I needed to do for my self-image. Never, I've never regretted anything that I've done general, genuinely out of compassion, out of love for my fellow man. And I, I would be hard pressed to find anyone who did because love is always gonna lead you to the greater outcome. And when we are triggered by these things, it's usually because a lack of love, because we want love, because we feel our self-identity is threatened. And why does that scare us? Because, well, if people don't see me in this light, maybe they'll think I'm unworthy of love. Maybe they'll judge me. You know, we think we fear all these things like we talk about in public speaking a lot. People think public speaking is like their number one fear, even above death. But they don't fear public speaking. They fear, oh, what if I say the wrong thing? What if I'm not perfect? What does that say about me? People are going to think this about me. People are going to judge me. So we want to live in this response instead of in this reaction. And I'm so glad to see Wendy List join us today. I haven't seen you in Clubhouse in quite some time, so I'm very eager to hear what you have to share with us. And again, guys, don't be shy. Please do raise your hands and come up and share with us as well, because we've got a whole hour today and a very small room. So we'd love to hear from you all. But uh, Wendy List, the mic is yours if you're available. Stefan, it's... Your brilliance is just such a joy to listen and just so knowledgeable. And I love bringing the science into it and understanding the brain better. Because sometimes I'm like a formula kind of person. Like I love math. So understanding a formula, that makes sense to me. So when we are able to break down the brain and understand where certain thoughts and feelings and reactions are coming from, I think that's that's adding so much value to our lives. This topic is very um, kind of ironic that I'm I'm here today. It's not ironic, right? Because everything happens in alignment with what we need or with what we're going through. So I have a share. Um, I live in Puerto Rico for most of the year and I've rented my home out to my mother-in-law and the only stipulation for that rental agreement was I have a sacred space up north in Connecticut where our home is. And it's where I have my books, my herbs, my crystals. It's where I do my yoga, my meditation. It's a sacred space. And that's what I've set it for. And that was my only stipulation. You could have full reign of the house, paint the lawn purple if you want. Just please don't go in my room. Again, my room. So we're bringing the ego into it. So a couple, we go back to visit and we're staying with her and I go to the apothecary, my space, this space, and clearly I'm still reprogramming that, that lingo, but I go into this space and it is literally packed to the top with boxes. She's used it as a storage unit. So I start stewing immediately and this is my mother-in-law who's like another mother to me. I love her. I don't want to offend her. I don't want to be in a negative feeling about what's going on either. So I um, I do ask her, how can I help you? Where can we move this stuff? Because this is not the space for this. Um, I, I asked you to please not put this stuff in here. And when your clutter comes into this space, then the energy of clutter is here. And that's just not really what this space is for. Fast forward, move the stuff out. Space is cleared out, wonderful couple of days ago, my sister's at the house and she's like, again, we have to take into account sometimes the environment or the people around us or what are they, what are you cooking up? Because I feel like she kind of did this on purpose. Like, oh, you're in Puerto Rico living your best life. Yeah, right. I'm going to throw a monkey, monkey wrench into that. She's like, I don't even want to tell you what she did to your room, girl. So I'm like, well, now you have to tell me. So she, sh she pans over because we're on FaceTime and there's like an office space set up in there with like the computer and a closet. And I start to get so, I'm like, I need to get off the phone because I'm literally allowing myself to get so angry 
So I come over to my husband and I'm like, this isn't even his fault, but I'm like cooking. I'm like, the, you hear he's traveling up. He just traveled up to Connecticut today. So I'm like, you're traveling up there. I need you to please be in my corner for this. And I get myself wound up into such a tizzy that I make myself physically sick. I was literally sick to my stomach by the time I was done trying to prove my point to him of why I needed him to speak on my behalf and act on my behalf. And I had to step back for a minute because I'm like, what is going on here? First of all, if you're like, as my sister, why would you, you, it was like, kind of like, you know how kids are. They're like, they poke. And she knew that this was like a triggering point for me. She knows how important this room is for me, just for what I've, I've cultivated in this room, even though it's, it's a thing, it's a material, but I had to sit down take a minute and sit back and then just kind of think, why am I allowing myself to get sick? I am allowing the ego, like you spoke of, to to take over and it's my room and it's she's disrespecting me. It's a lack of respect for me and all these me me's and really kind of taking back some of the lessons. And I don't you know, I don't think we're going to be perfect in this life, but I think the best thing that we can do is work on how fast we're able to catch that. Because in the past, I would have continued that tizzy for days until my husband went up there and did something. So today, he goes there. I'm getting to the end of this, I swear. He goes there and he's like, I walked in and my aunt has it set up like it's her office space. And for me, it's like EMF and just like all the, the stuff that's, she's a, a DCF caseworker, which in the United States is like um, child protective services. So it's like the conversations being had in that space. This is kind of like what's going through my mind. So at this point, I'm in a much calmer space. I've taken so many deep breaths and come back to myself. And I changed, I shifted my mindset from being focused on the problem to being focused on what is the solution? Because I can't, I'm not gonna be up there. I can't be up there. I would like my wishes to be respected. Um, are my feelings valid? I mean, kind of, yes, but really, you don't have the right to be angry, right? Like that's, <laughs> who wants the right to be angry? You you want the the peace. So I switch it to being more problem focused and I'm just gonna very politely explain that I'm going to be putting a lock on the door. And I'm sure she will understand that because we've spoken about that in the past. And I was overcome with this sense of just peace with that decision. And it was really, it was, it really shifted everything within me, even just kind of, I've been pensful on, on how I was going to handle this situation. I'm like, I'm just going to lock the room off. And that takes care of the problem. It takes care of the temptation of having her go back in there. I don't want discord between my mother-in-law and myself. Again, she's somebody that I love. I don't certainly don't want to give disrespect at all. That's like you were saying, totally not in alignment with how I want to be growing in, in my spirituality. And we do all this inner work. I certainly don't want to take one step forward and two steps back. So once I just shifted that mindset from being focused on the problem and what was going wrong and shifted it to, well, what's the solution to this? It totally changed everything. And it was, it literally was like a rock was lifted off of my chest and I felt like happy. I'm like, this is great. This is a wonderful solution solution for her, solution for me, solution for everybody. And it was just, I found myself in a really good place of peace. And I shared some of this story on Tea Time with Tinku the other day, but this is like, today was like the full rounding off of it. And I just, I'm so grateful for this room and for everybody um, listening and for this topic and for you allowing me to speak. Thank you so much, Stefan. I am past the mic. Thank you so much, Wendy. That was such a wonderful share and a great example. I wrote so much down during what you're saying because I've been there. I felt it viscerally in my body because I've had those triggers too. And especially with siblings and with family and in-laws, I'm sure I've never had, but I could imagine, like you said, they poke. It's that it reminded me of like 
little sister or brother being like, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, because people will walk up to the lines of your boundaries and be like, how far can it go? How far can it go? How far can it go? And then when they violate it and it triggers us, sometimes then they'll get in the victim set of mindset of being like, hey, well, you can't be mad at me. Like, what did I do? And then you become the villain in the story. But then again, the universe is giving us that trigger for a reason because we do attract everything in. Everything is for us, not happening to us. So even though you were, I think, in the right, quote unquote, as you said, to be angry, do you want to be right or do you want to be peaceful? Like, that's what it comes down to. And the part of you that wants to be right is that ego mind. It's like, who do you have to prove it to? I've, I've encountered that a lot in this recently where it's like, oh, I know I'm right in this, but I also know this conversation is a waste of time and there's they're not going to hear my point either way. So why am I even standing here arguing this, you know, instead of just looking for solutions, as you said, and the solution in your case was so simple, just a lock. Um, but I do want to make the point that unconditional love and being this unconditional loving being does not mean that we tolerate everything. It doesn't mean that we don't have boundaries. So you are totally in the right to look for that solution and just get a lot because then that is a firm boundary that cannot be violated. You know, we still have the right to our privacies, to our own sacred spaces, to our own things. And we don't have to look at that as selfish. We look at that as self-care. You know, you can't give unless your own cup is full. So you need to actually put yourself first. The best thing you can do for anyone else in the world, the best thing you can do for this planet is to put yourself first. And that goes against what people think intuitively a lot of times. Well, not intuitively, but what we've been conditioned to think of (laughs) as like our default saying, right? Is that, oh, well, I'm going to give, 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 and give so that because there's so much need out here. But you cannot give what you do not have. That is how the law of attraction works. You have to be that vibration to call it in. So we do deserve to have boundaries. We do deserve to make sure those boundaries are respected. But people are going to poke them. They are going to trigger them because, one, they need to find out where those boundaries are. And, two, the universe is going to constantly put us in these challenges that do give us this adversity so that we can grow through it. And that's just such a wonderful example of, okay, taking that step back, taking that time to pause, reassess the situation and be like, what do I really want here? Because, you know, you could have, as you said, taken out your anger and held on to that grudge for days. And I certainly see a lot of people and know a lot of people that I love dearly. And then you hear them tell this story that they're pissed about something that happened and you want to let them have their catharsis and vent to you a little bit. So you do, but then Tuesday comes and then they're complaining about it to another friend. And then you hear them complaining about to another friend and another friend. And then inevitably, oh, something happens again. And the story gets bigger and they're in a different situation. And that same pattern appears and, oh, woe is me. Why does this always happen to me? Well, because you're calling it in every time you continue to focus on it. We know what we focus on grows. That's, that's how our inclusive universe works. You can't think something out of existence. You don't need to push things you don't want away. You merely need to focus on what you do want and what is not for you. What you don't want will fall to the wayside naturally as you focus on cultivating that which you do want. So really, really beautiful example, Wendy List. So honored and blessed to have you in the space with us today. And Look at the beautiful panel that has grown out (laughs) since you shared. Thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, Greggy, we'll kick it to you if you'd like to share. The mic is yours. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. After Wendy, Liz, everyone's coming. (laughs) And I'm so, so happy and glad. Hello. Hello, everyone. And beautiful, beautiful topic. Uh, And um, I will can resonate every day. (laughs) And today also because um, when you are dealing with negative people and all the negativity, I know that I I just not react. (laughs) I just witness, <laughs> but sometimes it's very hard not to react, not to respond, not to do anything. Uh, but um, the best way to create your uh, your peace, your bliss, uh, it's not to react. It's something that all would learn from Master Sriyakasna. It's something that uh, I am using to do. 
uh, at first it was uh, challenging, yes, but um, as you go to the gym after a very, very long time and just doing some uh, stuff, uh, 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 very heavy stuff, and then you have some pain. Is that is not the response? You don't respond first. You want to respond, then mm, you respond less. It's like a muscle. You you create that. You exercise not to respond, and not to respond for your, for my vibration, for my manifestations, uh, for my peace, for my bliss, for for being uh, happy and uh, to vibrate high uh, because if i want to manifest things i have to be in that vibration so there's no point there's no point to to respond uh, and to uh, to respond to anything and sometimes it's challenging as i tell you because if you're having like me in the work 24 for a time and they are murmuring murmuring telling, telling you telling you telling you telling you telling you all the day long and not one person many person uh, the the first thing i do it's Breathing, breathe out, only breathe out, breathe out. And if I want to respond, I take a big breath in and breathe out just to, to come and say why I have to respond and why I have to answer of this. Uh, they will understand me? No. Why I would do that? To ruin my vibration, to ruin my peaceful? No. And I'm starting to calculate the pros and the cons to respond or no. Uh, and uh, at first it was, as I said, challenging, but day after day after day, I, I exercise myself. Uh, I work with myself not to respond. And I found peace, you see. I found peace. My mother here, I will say, you do it, do da, 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 da. breathe in, breathe out. I want to die to argue <laughs> and say, no, no, no. And she's continue. Oh, she's continue. No, 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 no react. No, no. <laughs> Sometimes I'm reacting and there is a chaos. But this chaos has uh, impact on me, has toll on me. And sometimes I say, oh, and uh, not only from negativity, from very little things I don't respond. And I say, okay, let it pass. I witness. Uh, I am, as Wendy said, uh, Wendy Lisser is so beautiful. She said all, all, you said it all. Uh, it's just a um, witness and um, not um, uh, for me and be, be solution focus. That I want to say, to be solution focus. Because yesterday I go to, to for some shopping because I have uh, I, I have to go to buy something. And I was very, 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 very with my my best friend. And I didn't want to say, okay, okay, let's hurry, let's hurry to go for a coffee. Yes, yes, yes. And I took the wrong size of my, of uh, a blouse. The old grade, you would say, oh my God, why you do that? Oh, no, and again, and I have to do that. I'm murmuring and no, I say, Thank you, thank you, universe, because it was a great gift for me. Because if I I go again to the shop, maybe something else uh, I will find, and a better blouse uh, uh, so uh, that I wanted, I will I will buy. It's okay. It's okay to do something wrong. It's okay from the little challenges. <laughs> Life is wonderful. Why I have to be in that state? I am happy. I am grateful. Uh, I am living. My heart is beating. I'm breathing. I'm alive. What a beautiful day to be alive because I I have to go again to the shop. Thank you because something else I will find there that suits me better than the first I bought. And if you have this, this attitude, this attitude of gratitude and this attitude of not reacting and um, and not responding, you will see that miracles happening in your life. You see that you are feeling better, and you will witness that um, you will impact other people. Other people will do the same. And uh, sometimes you will not fight. You have minimum fights in your life. 
minimum agreements and uh, you will see that your life will it will be wonderful it was so happy and easy because there is a and um, if, if you react you have a uh, act ah i always forget that uh, in english um you have some conflicts you don't want that you are as wendy said you are um you are the most important person in your life so be happy thank you thank you so much everyone uh, for listening to me and thank you for being here beautiful beautiful topic uh stefan and thank you namo himalaya thank you so much greggy such wonderful points because you know as you said we're not gonna be perfect there's still gonna be times that do trigger us that we catch ourselves and it's all just a practice um, our spiritual practices help us rewire our brain to be able to address these situations differently. So give yourself grace and have patience with yourself and don't be afraid to laugh at yourself. I know I personally get like really cranky, really huffy for like literally two minutes and then I'm laughing about it two seconds later because oftentimes when these things do trigger us and do affect our vibration, it's because we're taking life too seriously. Like we're here to play the game of life. We're here for funsies. We're here to have new experiences. We're here to share love and shine our light. We're not here to like, we get so stressed about what, like you said, getting the wrong size blouse. Like I get stressed about my stupid little day job. Like it, we are on a floating rock in the middle of an ever expanding universe. Like, and when you think down even to the quantum level and how things can be interchanged in a second and we can shift timelines and that that's not just make-believe that that is like scientifically proven through quantum superposition that uh our atoms are actually in different places at one time it's the schrodinger's cat you know you don't know if the cat is dead or alive i hate that example because i love cats um, but you don't know if the cat in the box is dead or alive until you open the box so until you observe it you observing it actually changes the reality so when you give yourself time to respond, you get to choose what reality you observe. You get to choose what version of yourself to be. And uh, Greggy, your share just reminded me of two quotes. One that I'm sure you guys see online all the time, if it costs your peace, it's too expensive. Because it really is. Like when you let things affect your vibration, when you let circumstance dictate your behavior, you are giving away all your power. And that's not why you came here. You came here to create. You didn't come here to react. When you react, you are playing someone else's creation. You are doing a script that is written by someone outside yourself. You are the creator. You are the captain of your ship. You don't want to just be a boat tied up in the harbor going wherever the waves crashing against the dock take you, right? You want to actually be steering this thing. And we will still get triggered. You know, we don't have to be perfect. We just have to be open and honest because God gave us an emotional guidance system. You know, if you're on the right path, you know if something's for you by your vibration, by how aligned you feel, by how good you feel. It doesn't mean we're going to be super happy all the time, but it means that we know that even through the struggles, I am learning something of value. This trigger was put here to really look at the person that annoys the shit out of you that you like. I, hate would be too strong of a word because we're we're all one in love, but just really, really bothers you. You just don't want to be around. They just affect your vibration. You have to look at them and thank them for what they're teaching you. Thank them for these struggles, for these challenges, because it's helping you grow into this person and that you're meant to be, that is going to be the change that you want to see in the world. Because if you're here in this room, I know you are a super loving person. I know you want to be a great person and be kind to everyone. And you're probably a light worker. I don't know if you identify with that word, but you most likely are if you're drawn to the spiritual space. And as light workers, we are here to transmute and help people transmute that energy from that frustration, from those triggers to really heal to get back to love, to get back to that high vibration. So oftentimes the burden is put on us to be the bigger person. And I know it annoyed some of my friends. Uh, actually, I've seen 
radical positive shifts in a lot of my friends. But in the beginning, when I was starting to get a lot of traction and personal development in these spaces, bothered people that I wouldn't let them complain to me. And I'm like, look, I'm not going to commiserate with you. And that is oftentimes a way that we learn to bond in our society. And just because, you know, Master always says, if you want to do something negative, look at all the support behind you you have to do negative. I mean, just look at how things go viral online, right? The algorithm is literally what's going to make you most engaged. Oh, if you're angry, you're on here fighting all the time. So that's the uh, piece of media that's going to be perpetually promoted. Look at how the news is presented. Everything is just negative, negative, negative. There's so much support if you want to do negative. If you want to take the high road, if you want to be that light worker, if you want to be that positive example, it is a lot more difficult to get behind. Thankfully, that's changing as the world awakens. But that puts a lot of burden on our shoulders to really make sure we're responding instead of reacting. Because as I said, I'm not going to commiserate with my friends because to me, that's like enabling. It's like, well, if, if you love me, you'd let me vent and you let me do this. It's like, well, no, because I want you to have a high vibration. I want you to realize that this is happening for you, that it's not happening to you. I want you to be able to attract in better things and not to continue to get stuck in this thought pattern and this victim mindset and continue to manifest the same thing. In the same way that it's like, the four-year-old might think I'm a super meanie for not letting him eat the entire tub of Sour Patch Kids, right? But it's like, it's not because I don't love you. And you, it would be unloving to let you eat the whole thing because you're going to stomach ache because you're cavities because it's not good for you, you know? So to be the light worker and to be the bigger person is to always be that witness, as you said, Greggy, and to try to always act in accordance with our, our highest self which is that of love. And you know, the second quote that I was reminded of is the biggest flex is a relaxed nervous system. Because, you know, back when Wendy Liss was uh, speaking on her story and her share, I was moved by like, nothing actually changed in your situation, Wendy, because you were in Puerto Rico, right? You didn't know anything about the room. The room had been disrupted that entire time. It wasn't up until you were told that triggered that reaction in your body. So again, that shows the power of our mind, that we're always reacting to our nervous system. We're always reacting to our body and our thoughts and the emotions those thoughts draw up in us because of the narratives we tie to them. We're not actually reacting to circumstance. We're not actually reacting to the things that happened because that change had already happened with, without you even knowing. Um, so, so thankful you all got to join us today. Um, Marisol, love to hear from you next. Mike is yours. If you are available right now, if not, we can hop to Jody. Hi, I'm sorry about that. I, as soon as I was listening to the whole thing, as soon as I put it down, you said my name. <laughs> Thank you so much for this room, uh, guys. I, I've been I've been able to listen to some of you guys' uh, shares, and this is something that um, we had a, a lot of us. It seems like had a lot of uh, things when we were kind of. You know, it, it was kind of the universe talking to us and us just witnessing, like Master says, right? Um, and I, I have been experiencing that. And it seems like we, all of us kind of have recently with the, with the full moon that we just had. And it's just every time it's like I'm just ready with my pen and my, uh, my piece of paper to write down what was triggered, you know, what came through that time. What do I still need to work on? Um, and it, right, I want to say after, after the three, four days or something like that, uh, this just Monday, you know, I, it was like, I felt like I, I rolled a coaster of chaos coming through and just in every situation. And it just, was just, I even felt dense myself. I felt a lot more heavy, um, just body was just trying to navigate, you know, um, through just walking. I even felt it that way. And realizing like oh man it's a it's you know a full moon and some people were sick that I was talking to um and they weren't feeling well they were feeling too much and I um the moment that it's just like I realized you know what day it was I took a step back and I was like no nope, you know I'm not gonna worry about this thing that that happened you know I'm not gonna worry about my phone crashing my phone crash or I didn't see that there was a purchase that was made with my card um, that created a whole situation for me, you know, because it was an unexpected thing. And then, you know, uh, the phone not working and 
people not feeling well and, and people telling you, hey, I'm not feeling, you know, well after I did this major life event. And so it was just so many things that happened all at once that I was like, I thought about it in my head. I'm like, I can either give in, start to worry and stress out and start to think about these things that I have no control over, or I can just acknowledge that they're happening and say, yep, I see that. I see this and I see all of this all at once. Right. But I'm not going to give my energy to it. You know, I am acknowledging, I see it all. I see it all the chaos and it was kind of like, okay, let me just walk beside it and not in it, you know, and let me just stay over here and control my mind and have that disciplined mind to say, I'm not going to think with my human little self and say, let me solve this problem. Let me solve that problem. Let me figure that out. Let me do, nope. I surrender. I'm fine. Life still keeps going. What can I do today to make it better? My, myself, like, do I need, can I take a shower right now? Can I take a nap? That day I decided to take a nap. I, I went to meditate and I took a nap and I it was intentionally to, to jump into a more common, calm, calmer reality um, and kind of solve the things that were going on in a quantum space rather than, you know, me and my myself trying to figure any of those stuff out or whatever. Um, and when I woke up, I felt so much better. It was only, it was like less than an hour. Um, I was able to ground myself. I was able to come back to me. And uh, as the day went on, I'm like, okay, I'm going to make something good to eat. And then I'm going to go get my kids and figure out the rest of uh, the rest of it on the way there, right? And it was just a few little stops that I had to do, but everything just came together that day. Everything, everything. I didn't have to find out. I didn't have to call no bank. I didn't have to really do much. Um, everything was just solved for me. By the time, you know, I think it was like eight o'clock came, I was ready to go back to sleep and, you know, start my new day all over again. But it was definitely a lot of that that discipline because I wanted to go back to the old the old self. I wanted to give in. I wanted to to say, let me freak out. You know, let me have this panic moment or whatever. Let me do this. Let me do that. And that's always okay to do if you need to. It's always okay to acknowledge them, but don't dive into them. You don't, you know, once you understand it and you know, hey, this is what's happening to me. This is my reaction. This is how I normally react to things, but this is what I'm going to do, you know? And every time it's a choice. It's a choice to be happy. It's a choice to be stressed. It's a choice to do different things. So when we think about, hey, someone, this person did this to me or that, that, situation is happening to me. It's happening for us. Everything's happening for us. Once you take and leave that victim mindset and put it away to understand, hey, this, I, I'm the creator. Like Stefan said, I'm the freaking creator. I'm, I'm doing this reality. So what, what do I need to do to tweak it? What can I do to hack it? What can I do to change it? Whatever, right? However you want to put it. How can I jump into this quantum in the fastest way possible? That is the I, I I love to think about it that way in my reality in my world. That's how that's what works for me, you know. Um, so yeah, that I would say definitely learning how to cope with the way that you react to things with your triggers. Learning if okay, I, I need five minutes to walk. I need you know I need to go watch TV or this funny show or play with my dog, going outside, whatever, you know. Um, finding that within yourself and asking yourself those questions, you know, because at the end of the day, we have to spend time with ourselves. We have to get to know ourselves better than anybody, you know, in the planet. And it definitely learning that and doing it and making that conscious choice to say, hey, I know what the universe, you know, is doing to me. I know what's happening right now. Let me put uh, this to the side and let me jump into this mode. Um, and it definitely will keep you aligned and keep you, you know, going with your manifestations and going with what you're asking. Because a lot of the times that these challenges come through is based on what you're asking. 
So you're being tested for things that you are asking for anyway to begin with. So keeping that in mind, you know, that again, everything's happening for you. But I have said enough. Thank you so much, guys. I uh, love you guys. Namo Himalaya. Thank you so much, Marisol. I definitely relate deeply to a lot of what you said. Uh, definitely in feeling the heavy vibes. And this morning, I don't know, Master said we were supposed to be very energized and like creative this morning. I felt very like aggro and amped. But I loved what you said. You guys can probably tell from the way I'm talking. But I love what you said about walking beside it because they're not our emotions necessarily, right? It can be from those around us, from the world, from even residual energy from old timelines. We've changed our mind, we've changed our disposition, we've changed our timeline, but there's still those old habits working their way out. There's still that old, uh, you guys have ever heard of the book, uh, The Body Keeps the Score. You know, there's trauma actually stored physically in our body. So sometimes I'll feel like my mind is totally beyond a situation, my mind is totally calm, but my heart is still doing the anxiety thing. Like my body is still, my skin's still crawling in a certain way. Uh, and I just have to recognize like, hey, this is not my emotion. And as you said, Marisol, just acknowledge it and then let it go and do something else to not spiritually bypass it, but to distract yourself as that energy moves through you. Because emotions are just energy in motion. So you can let them come and go. And you had some great examples of just like, yeah, I'm going to sleep it off right now. And naps, water in any form, it's actually been proven not only just like a shower, but even just seeing a lake, even just going out in nature. Because if you think about it, in terms of our mind developing, not only the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex over a millennia, but we were outside up until, what, like 17, 1800, up until the Industrial Revolution, and then we have all the city and all this concrete. So much of our brain power gets used trying to process just being in this environment that we don't even realize because we've never known anything else. But when we go out in nature, it's been scientifically proven that the mind calms to a certain degree, even just seeing nature imagery on uh, like the screen, even on the television, because we were developed and evolved to exist within that. And that's why people can be more heightened and be more aware and be easily more in the present moment, because they don't have these subconscious perceived threats in the way that we do in these false structures. And so really just having the awareness of Sometimes what's going on in my body is not necessarily mine to deal with, and I don't have to tie a narrative to it, and I don't have to logic my way into or out of it. You can walk beside it, as you said, because we oftentimes think of ourselves as a spirit inside a body, but it's the opposite way. We are a body inside this ever-expanding spirit, and so when you walk beside it, you're stepping into that ethereal body where your higher self is exists where you are in touch with oneness without having this boundary of the individual, this boundary of the ego. And I love what you said about even just like walking the dog or watching TV, because I think oftentimes, especially in personal development spaces, there's kind of this pressure to be this like, oh, perfect spiritual person. And I have to like always do all my meditation, do my journaling and do my yoga. And yes, these are great proven practices and they definitely do raise your vibration. And it's great to be disciplined with them. But if it feels more like a chore in the moment, if it's lowering your vibration to force yourself into something, you should never be depriving yourself of anything. You should never be forcing yourself into anything. You should always be focusing on what you stand to gain, not what you're losing, not what you're missing out on. So if it feels like more than a chore and people might, oh, judge you, oh, watching TV is a waste of time, not if it's going to raise my vibration to go watch that comedy show, as you said, not if my mind needs a break, you know, do what works for you. You are the only one feeling your nervous system. You are the only one in your body. You are the only one living your life and you are the only one shaping your reality. So you are ultimately the only authority on what is going to raise your vibration. And that is your emotional guidance system. That is what we were given to guide us towards the higher vibe to the easier thought. And I was, uh, compelled by what Wendy Liz said in the chat as well about our light drawing people in because that happens as light workers, you know, our light attracts people who are in need of healing, but it also triggers them because bright light casts shadows and not everyone is ready to see their shadow self. That's why Greggy's friend was like, you're so positive. It's annoying. But at the same time, there's envy there because they want to be positive because they're attracted to it because everyone wants to be happy. Everyone ultimately, I think, does want the same things. They want 
to be content. They want to be seen. They want to be valued. They want to be heard. They want to feel love and connection. And I know this to be true because you are another me. I am another you. In oneness, there is no separation. So we do all at our core soul frequency search for the same thing, but in the physical, we feel it different ways and we do different things to achieve that feeling. So really, really fantastic shares, guys. Um, Tiffany, thank you so much for raising your hand. It looks like Jody's on the phone, so we, we would love to hear from you now. Uh, Mike, is yours? Oh, sure. No problem. Actually, good timing because I'm working on stuff while I listen to you guys, and it's a good discussion. You know, for me, my manifestation journey, ironically enough, after one of the worst years of my life in 2018, I, you know, went on this journey in 2019 and becoming more self-aware, and then I found this manifestation. And something that, you know, I would recommend, and I think you touched on it a bit, is following your joy and what's going to feel good to you in this moment, and whether that's reading a book or going to hang with some friends or watching a TV show because, you know, as in society we're taught that it's, you know, if you're not doing anything productive, basically, like working or get, hustling, then you're not being productive. And it is productive to rest and take that time for yourself. That's something I've learned. Um, for me also, I've been following, you know, there's a lot of teachers out there like Abraham Hicks, Neville Goddard, and others. Um, I've started leaning into more of Neville's teachings because it resonates with me a little more and it's a little easier to understand than some of the others. And um, one of the techniques he recommends is called SATS, like the state akin to sleep. And that's something I've started doing every night, like regardless of what kind of, you know, day I've had or what's going on. I have this manifestation track I purchased from a coach uh, a couple of years ago. But I'll put that on at night and some like um, um, uh, peaceful music in the background. It's like meditation, something or other. And I'll, you know, kind of visualize that until I fall asleep. And it's actually something I look forward to at the end of the day. Thank you. Good discussion. Thank you so much for raising your hand and sharing with us. That's like my favorite advice of the day, honestly, from you right now. Follow your joy. It cannot get simpler and it cannot get better than that. That is what we are here to do. We are here to joyously expand and explore and grow into that expansion. And when we deny ourselves that joy, when we think we have to be productive, go, go, go all the time, we're never in receiving mode to get our manifestation. You know, we're very much conditioned to always be in this masculine. You know, I'm a dude, but I am a divine feminine. I know that about myself. Like in this world, we're meant to be oh, you have to dog eat dog, you have to go out and get this and make this bread and hustle and be in that masculine mode. But honestly, you don't have to do anything other than be your authentic self and follow your joy in every moment. And that will lead you on the path to whatever's supposed to unfold for you because God has it all handled. Spirit has the script already written. You are the main character. You just have to enjoy yourself and be a witness, find the clues that success is leaving for you and enjoy the moment. Like we didn't come here to take life so seriously. It doesn't mean we disvalue our life. It doesn't mean we're flippant about it. It doesn't mean we don't aspire to things, but it means we don't let things affect our vibration. Because as we said, if it costs your peace, it's too expensive. It's not worth it. Like your vibe is the only thing you have control over. So make sure that it's aligned with your actual values with what you're actually trying to manifest with what you actually want to call in. And I don't think it's ironic at all that you found your manifestation after um, one of your darkest periods, because it is always darkest before the dawn, but we wouldn't recognize the light if it were not for the dark. That is the yin and yang. That is the oneness. So really, really wonderful share. Thank, thank you so much for raising your hand. Guys, we've got about four minutes left. If Jody, you wanted to do a quick share, we would love to hear from you. Hey, I, I love this topic, reacting or responding, um, because <laughs> there's always stuff going on in my life that I could react or respond or just observe. Um, and uh, the last couple of days now, I've actually chosen to um, just pull back and kind of just witness. Uh, I'm getting ready to go on a on a my last summer vacation and packing and um, finding somebody to watch the cats, knowing that when I get back, I'm going to go get a couple of dogs, <laughs> puppies actually. Um, and there's just kind of chaos all around, um, figuring out who's going to stay in the house or is it, or are we just going to give somebody the key? 
uh, to come in and take care of the cats. And uh, I am observing um, a lot of um, just not that I'm just not feeling at peace and I want to be. I want to be calm while I'm moving through the roller coaster ride, the waves, the the ebbs and flows of of all this energy. Um, and it I realized when I was talking to um, a friend of mine who I kind of call, she's an energy healer and a, I just kind of call her a counselor. <laughs> Um, and we were talking about people with narcissistic behavior and what she mentioned was that um, narcissistic, well, she labels people. I don't. I just say people have narcissistic behavior. She said narcissists really trigger empaths. And I just went, oh my gosh, because that's, I've, I just recognize, recognize that that has been going on um, also too. So I've just kind of been pulled back and trying to ground myself and um, just really be in a place of observing and trying to just surrender to whatever's flowing um, and just kind of be the uh, the duck on the water or the cork on the top of the wave um, and well actually not just the cork let's let's change that metaphor to <laughs> the sailboat because I do have sail and I can, I, if, while I can't change the winds, I can adjust the sails so that I can still move in a direction uh, regardless of how quick or fast um, I, I move in that direction. Um, so trying to reground myself and um, take charge of things that I need to, uh, let go of things that I can't change anyway. And um, saying what is that the serenity prayer <laughs> wisdom to know the difference and so i th i'm really working on being patient and then responding and trying not to react uh and yet i still found myself reacting to a few things um someone that has no business in in my plans is trying to affect them and i kind of had I, I spoke very sharply about you know don't talk right now this is this is my um, my negotiation not yours and uh, I didn't put it so bluntly I mean I I was pretty blunt and I didn't put it so clearly as that now that I've had time to think about it um, so that probably was a reaction um, and so being being in the situation is different from after it's over and you can go and look at it so when um when you choose to look back to see whether you've responded or or reacted uh and then make a new goal or to to do this instead of that the next time you're in that situation the one thing people forget to do is then lock it in with a mental scenario or ask somebody to actually role play it with you so that you can actually respond in a situation like that and practice a couple of different phrases that you would say or thoughts that you would let run through your head right then if you um, if you say I want to change my behavior then mentally see yourself changing it so that you will give yourself a, a higher percentage of actually doing that behavior the next time so that you are responding instead of reacting. I'm Jody and I yield the mic. Thank you so much for sharing Jody. Such wonderful points because hindsight is 2020. So that's such great advice to look back and be like, okay, did I react or did I respond? What was the outcome of that? and how am I gonna address this next time? So you're not just like, oh, here's a trigger again. I recognize it, yay, but still reacting the same way. You know, what systems am I gonna put in place to really make sure that I have the ability to respond? And I love what you said with the analogy of being the sailboat and, oh, I can't control the winds, but I can shift the direction my sail is going. Because Grandmaster Akshar always talks about, yeah, we go with the flow 
and spiritual people are always like, yeah, go with the flow, man, whatever. I don't need a plan. And I very much used to be that way. He's like, but what current are you flowing with? You know, that is a choice that we have. We do get to choose our timeline. We do get to choose our reality. And as you said, with the serenity prayer, you know, accept what you cannot change and focus on what you can. You know, I'm butchering it, but <laughs> paraphrasing it. Um, and the only thing we really can change is our vibration our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions, and making sure that those are aligned with our actual goals, our actual values, and with who we truly are. And I think authentically, in our core soul frequency, all of us are just the vibration of love. So really, how to get back to love and align with a more joyous, a more loving life. So such, such beautiful shares. Thank you guys all so much, all our wonderful speakers and everyone from the audience for joining sharing your energy with us this morning. We're going to get to go deeper into this topic because Marisol's got staying calm in the chaos coming up for us on Monday, I believe. Uh, we are here for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday here in the Ironverse Clubhouse room at 10 a.m. PT, 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so please do come join us again and don't be shy. This is your room as much as ours. We love hearing from you guys love learning from each other. Please do be sure to follow all of our wonderful speakers, both here on Clubhouse and anywhere you might find them on the interwebs because there is a lot of free value being shared and we really are helping to raise the vibration of the planet every time we connect together. And I know it certainly makes a huge impact on my life to have your guys' guidance and wisdom and support. So thank you so much. All my love to you. Um, I'm going to let my wonderful moderators unmute to say their goodbyes and We'll, we'll part ways for the day. Thank you, thank you. Uh, happy, happy weekend. Um, you vibrate high. Love you all so much. Huh? And see you on Monday. On oh, Monday, Namo Himalaya. Namo Himalaya, everybody. Thank you so much for coming and staying till the end and for your beautiful shares. Um, I love the vibe of this room. It, connects with my heart and it makes it feel like I'm dancing. So thank you so much, guys. I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your weekend. Nama Himalaya. And folks, um, remember, if you joined in like I did like late, or if you missed something for anything, or you, you want to go back and take those notes that Stefan was talking about taking from Marisol, listen to the recording and um, yeah, send me the link. <laughs> Because I was on the phone for a little bit. Anyway, um, have a great weekend, and we will see you Monday. Nama Himalaya. Yes, Jody. thank you. The recordings are always available. We make them public rooms with replay on, so you can go back. If you go to any one of our speaker pages, scroll through, you can see every one of the clubhouse rooms we've spoken in and listen to the replay in that way. They changed. Um, you can't go through the I'm Verse Club room anymore. You have to go to speaker profile for some reason. But all the recordings are still there if anytime you need to reference them or just need a little pick-me-up for your vibration. So much love. I hope you have a fantastic evening, morning, day, wherever you find yourself in the world. I love you. And I'm going to close the room in three, two, one.